Hey everybody, this is Praxis, and I was able to get this thing kind of put back together. Uh, I think the, the best theory probably is that it was bare. Uh, we, we got some marks here. I noticed on the back side, over here, uh, you know, up in this area, there were there were a few more. But as you can see, I got it pretty much all back together there. I got all the uh, all the chunks in there. There's a few little souvenirs of the experience left, which uh, I don't know. Maybe I'll fill those in with something, but. Uh, uh, you know, I got it back together. I don't know if the glue that I chose was the best, so I used Elmer's wood glue on it, and um, I think Elmer's wood glue is kind of like food. It's sort of protein-based, and, you know, from school, kids would, like, even eat glue. So I'm not sure if I uh, fixed it by smearing food all over it, but, uh, you know, I guess we'll just see what happens. You know, a lot of you guys presented some different theories on what you think might have attacked that, and, and, and more importantly, the why. Of, uh, of why it got attacked uh, and my dad was by the other day and he actually shared a lot of you guys' thoughts that probably the fact that this thing kind of looks like a beehive might have been what uh, drew the bear in you know they've become visually astute and they uh, you know they can tell what is a beehive or apparently maybe not all the time but um, yeah, that, that seems like a pretty good theory as to why that was uh, attacked. So, you know, we'll see. I'm gonna be putting in some motion activated um, little siren things that uh, go off for like 45 seconds. I'll put a link down in the description below. Nah, I won't do that in this video. I'll do it in another video when I'm actually putting them up. Um, but I'm gonna kind of get them around here because, you know, independently of whether or not any bears ever wanna attack that again, these are all fruit trees. So the bear came up and walked past a bunch of fruit trees to even get to that thing. So, um, yeah, I think it'd probably be a good idea for me to figure out a way of, uh, you know, not having, not having bears, uh, you know, come into this area at all. So just try, try to spook them away, whether they're after the vent or the apples on my trees. Uh, it's supposed to rain a little bit later today, but I wanted to get this thing um, filled in. This is the hole where the, uh, the conduits come up. Uh, the solar panels are all working really great. Um, that's excellent. It's nice to not have wires, so you'll run into the door over there. Uh, the antenna, the shortwave antenna, you know, it's been really frustrating, the shortwave antenna. I haven't gotten, I'm not, I don't know what's going on with it. Uh, I've never, I've never built such a large antenna. You can kind of see it thrown all back in the trees. I'll just bring it back around there. Uh, I've never built a shortwave antenna, but I have successfully built FM antennas before. Here it is here. This is tuned to 9.95 megahertz, and it's 50 feet long tip to tip. I'm actually missing a little bit of uh, PVC on it, but uh, I'm, I'm not really getting a, a lot of confirmation that this thing works great. Now, I have tested it, and I've been able to confirm that it does do, it does do something. It does function in some way, because I, uh, I took my radio and just hooked it up to a piece of coax, just random piece of coax into the antenna in, and wouldn't pick up stations. I plugged mine in, and this, uh, at least the, the two stations that I was able to find they came in crystal clear, so it works, and I was able to, you know, it functions as an antenna, but I wasn't really able to find a lot of stations out there, and I remember from years past, you know, you'd bump, bump into things. Now, when I was doing the testing, uh, it wasn't under ideal circumstances. It was during the day, and as I understand, you tend to get better uh, reception at night. It was during crystal clear skies, and as I understand, you get, tend to get better reception when it's cloudy. And it was during geomagnetic storms, uh, because we've, the sun's just been spitting out a lot of CMEs lately. We've had a lot of uh, geomagnetic storms, and whenever I've had the opportunity to test it, we've always kind of been in the middle of one. So, you know, maybe it's that kind of stuff, but it's been a little frustrating, you know. The past couple days have just been, you know, they have, I, I haven't been, like, riding on a high, you know, between the bear ripping that apart, I had to fix that, and, you know, sketchy results with the, uh, uh, the antenna, uh, you know, whatever, but largely, the shelter's pretty much there, I'm starting to put food and supplies in there, and, uh, you know, things are going all right, but, uh, I don't know, I have days like that, and I'm kind of like, eh, you know, they just sort of demotivate me. But, you know, morning comes again. It's morning right now, time of recording, and, um, you know, I'm excited to get some stuff done. And before the rain comes in, I am going to grab some dirt from down there and just kind of pack this hole full. And, uh, and then I think I'm going to work on the bellows today. There's going to be bellows for getting air in there, and I can work on that inside in the greenhouse. That's it. Thanks for watching.